your Apple devices are about to completely change with all the new updates that were announced at WWDC 25 today. There's a lot happening with the new system updates and I'm honestly excited about what's to come. I watched the whole keynote so you wouldn't have to and I'm gonna highlight everything you need to know. Let's get into it. Now you've probably already heard the rumor, but all the systems are updating to the number 26 at the end. I actually think I like that better cause it'll be easier to keep up with it instead of multiple numbers across the different systems. Starting off with iOS 26 and the redesign. Apple is completely changing the look of your devices with liquid glass. The liquid glass feature gives your device a cleaner look and makes your buttons and menus transparent so you can see more of the screen at all times. It moves with you like real glass and it's supposed to be more responsive to the touch. And just like real glass, it reflects the color of the current screen that you're on. Also the menus and navigation bars have a rounded edge now to match the rounded edges on your devices. This redesign is giving new device vibes and it's been a while since we had that with a system update, especially with all the customization options like the 3D lock screen wallpaper, clear app icons, and the ability to color tint your app icons. Another customization they've added is the clock on the lock screen will now reframe. The camera is not only getting a new icon design, it's also getting a new design within the app. When you first open the app, you will have a photo and video option. Now the other options are still there. You'll just have to swipe across to access them. And swiping up allows you to access all the camera settings. Now changing the format is easier with the new icon at the top of the screen. If you ask me, I think Apple heard all the feedback from the last change to the photos app. So there's been a another redesign. Now you have two tabs, one for the library and one for collections. Hopefully this update will be more functional and you can also access the 3D photo effect in the app. In Safari, web pages not only fill up the whole screen, but now when you scroll, the navigation bar shrinks. FaceTime got a little makeover and now the control icons are at the bottom right when you're on a call and they will automatically disappear when you're not using them, giving you the full screen to view the person that you're speaking with. FaceTime also has posters for your contacts. These will make it easier to access your video messages because they play right from the poster. The CarPlay design also got a few updates. Now they offer dark mode icons. There will also be a compact notification when you get calls so you can still see the map while you're driving. And in messages, you can use the tap back feature and access your pinned contacts. CarPlay will also have widgets and a live activities feature. In addition to CarPlay, now there's CarPlay Ultra, which basically Apple runs all the screens in the car and offers customization options, letting you control car functions like the radio and climate in the CarPlay app. Now the phone app will give you the option to use a unified layout, which will group your favorites, recents, and voicemails, making it easier to see everything at a glance. Also, Apple Intelligence will summarize your voicemails because they know we don't check voicemails. iOS 26 also adds a call screening feature for calls that you receive from an unknown number. It will answer the call, find out who they are, why they're calling, then your phone will ring and it will display the information that they provided so you can decide if you want to answer the phone or not. Oh, and this next feature is one that I'll be using a lot. I hate being on hold waiting to speak to a customer service rep. Now you can use the hold assist feature to keep your spot in line until someone answers the phone. Your phone will automatically detect when you have whole music playing and it will ask if you wanna use the feature. The call stays connected and basically goes on mute until someone answers the phone. Then it'll ring back and let you know that the rep is ready while simultaneously letting the rep know that you're coming to the line. The iPhone has evolved into a real live personal assistant and I love that for us. Y'all, we can finally update the background and messages. And before you say it, I already know this is an old feature on Android phones, but let us be happy for a moment, please and thank you. The group chat also got a couple of new features. You can now ask questions using a polling feature. Apple Cash has entered the group chat and you will be able to see who is currently typing a message with the new chat indicator. Live translation will be introduced to all devices in the system update and it can be accessed using the apps for message, phone, and FaceTime. The translations happen in real time. So when you're on FaceTime, the transcribed words will appear on the screen. And when you're on the phone, the message will be spoken to the person in the language that they understand. Maps has some new features where it notifies you of any unexpected traffic issues on your usual route and keeps a library of your visited places, making it easier for you to search where you've been. But they also let us know, anybody who's worried about that, that it's a locked feature. Apple doesn't even have access to it and you have to know how to unlock it to get access to that. Just for those who may be concerned about 
things like that. Visual intelligence is now available with any app. Just take a screenshot and use the image search option at the bottom to get more information. You can ask ChatGPT about the image and if there's a date on the image, you can add it to your calendar right from the image screen. Watch iOS now has a workout buddy to help keep you motivated. The workout app got a new layout with more customization options and the Apple Watch will now be able to adjust the volume of notifications based on your environment. So if you go into like a bank, it's gonna know that you're in that quiet environment and it's gonna automatically turn down the volume on your notifications. And if you receive a notification that you wanna dismiss, all you have to do is flick your wrist. Mac OS Tahoe also received a new design with liquid glass. It has a transparent menu bar and there are more ways to customize the control center. Y'all, we are gonna have some fun with the Mac customizations. I can't wait to dive into them. You can now change the color of file folders and add emojis and the transparent color tint and icons is gonna be available on the Mac too. Mac is also getting a live activity feature that allows you to get real-time notifications for things like DoorDash. And when you open the notification, it opens the iPhone app on your MacBook. And now you can make and answer calls from your MacBook. Shortcuts can now use intelligent actions to create shortcuts using Apple intelligence. There's a new private cloud compute action that allows you to do advanced prompts like comparing your notes to a recording to make sure you didn't miss anything. Spotlight will now make suggestions based on your regular workflow. And you can see all of your apps from the Spotlight, including apps that are only on your iPhone. You can also take action in Spotlight without having to go to the app first, like creating an event or playing a podcast. Spotlight is definitely giving personal assistant vibes. Now for the main event of the keynote, iPad OS 26. This was one of the most exciting updates, not just because I'm an iPad girl, because they did their big one with the iPad this time. Multitasking has completely changed on the iPad. The iPad is really giving laptop experience. You can open multiple windows on your iPad homepage and you can also minimize the windows and come back to them later like you can on a laptop. You can also tile the windows and open more windows on top of the tile windows. And on top of the window feature, there's also gonna be a menu at the top of the screen. Unlike Stage Manager, these window features are gonna be available on all iPad models. Now Files on iPad also got an update. Now Files has an updated list view with resizable columns and the folders that can be customized with the colors and icons. And when you're opening a file, you can choose which app you wanna open it with. And you can also set the app to be the default for opening those types of files in the future. You can add your most used folders to the dock now. And when you tap the folder, it's gonna fan out and show you the files that are inside. Preview is coming to iPad. And in this app, it allows you to edit your PDFs. Now for my content creators, there's an audible input control. You can choose the mic or audio input you want to use and you can also select it for individual apps. There's a local recording feature that allows you to record a podcast with someone and it'll be like a FaceTime call but it'll record in high quality and your AirPods can now be used to start and stop recording on the iPad. If you use your iPad for editing videos in apps like Final Cut Pro, you don't have to stay in the app until the download is complete. You can exit it and it will continue to export in the background and you can work on other things like your thumbnails. That about sums it up. Make sure you let me know in the comments what you're looking forward to with this update and if there are any other features that you would have liked seen included with this update. All right, y'all, till next time.